Hello everyone, I have a weird video for you today. This video will basically consist of a few random stuff that I wanted to tell the audience, but yeah, it just wasn't worth making into their separate videos. So yeah, it will be a mixture of those, which includes a mini review of some really cheap Chinese, well not, not really cheap, but cheap Chinese side cutters that are actually pretty good quality. I will show you some of the changes I made in the workshop. I will update you on the Voron. Plus, I'm also going to show you a quick trick for you to get about a dollar worth of coupons very easily in like 30 seconds from AliExpress. So you can save money and you can do the trick pretty much infinitely. You can only do it once every 12 hours, but other than that, there is no limit as far as I can tell. And I think I saved like $20 so far with that, so yeah, again, that's a pretty useful trick in my opinion. I guess I'll begin with the Voron. For Voron, I'm waiting for some Chinese parts for the 2.4 upgrade. Most of the parts arrived, so I don't expect the wait to be that long, but still I'm waiting for some stuff. Plus, on top of that, I decided to do the 0.9 stepping angle high temperature LDO motor upgrade for the gantry for the A and B motors and I ordered the high temperature motors so again I'm waiting for those as well and lastly and at, in my opinion the most important one uh, when I'm upgrading to 2.4 I'm not going to upgrade to the uh, afterburner clockwork extruder instead I'm going to upgrade to the afterburner Galileo extruder I'm sure you've heard of it if you're in the discord it seems like a neat project from Jared and I joined the group by for that I'm waiting for my turn for them to ship. They haven't contacted me yet, but I assume that's because I joined the group by a little late. And yeah, I'm just waiting for my turn. But I ordered any, every other part I need for that, so it should be happening when I'm doing the 2.4 upgrade. And well, yeah, that's basically the plan and the parts I'm waiting for. Now, if you follow the 2.4 videos from the beginning, you know that I was trying to keep it to a bi-weekly schedule. That's not going to happen anymore, I don't think. There's just been too many delays and I'm trying to do more per video instead of just, okay, I did this little thing end of episode, so yeah. As a result, I can't keep up with the bi-weekly schedule, but again, I'll try to do as of them as often as I can. Plus, most of the rest of the content on this channel is also focused on 3D printing, so I think you will find some of the rest of the content interesting as well, at least I hope that. So yeah, there is still plenty of 3D printing content, don't worry about that. And yeah, I think that's about it for the war on. Now let's move on to the trick I mentioned with the AliExpress coupons. So yeah, I'll walk you through this. So first of all, you will need to do this on AliExpress mobile, so yeah, you need to do this on your phone. And sorry about the vertical video as well, but yeah, this is what I can do, obviously, because I'm recording this on a phone. So let's get to it. To get your coupon, you need to open AliExpress on mobile and then uh, tap the coupon piles uh, button on the right side. Wait for the page to load. And this will pop up some sort of a mini game. You don't really have to bother with anything, just tap play now. You will hear the game start. And you only have to press the button that says blast once. You can continue to tap it if you want to play it authentically, I guess, but in reality you can only fill the ball about to the middle and it doesn't affect the end coupon you get. So after the time's up, you get your 98 cent coupon, tap the redeem coupon button below invite now and do it again on the pop-up as well. And there we go, we have our 98 cent coupon. So let's move on to the review part of the video. What I'm going to review is this pair of side cutters that I bought from AliExpress. They either cost eight or nine dollars, I don't exactly remember, but yeah, these, this pair is brand new. But I have another one of these that I bought over a year ago here. These were really abused in their life so far. I used these to cut uh, some, some bad edges of uh, 
aluminium extrusions and the hardened steel 5mm shafts that we use for Voron and well yeah even with cutting those cutting plastics and you know the usual side cutter stuff as well during its uh, abused one year of life so far as you can see there really is no significant damage on the blades you can see a small thing uh, here I don't know if it's showing up on camera but yeah other than that which is perfectly fine for again being abused for a year and I do mean really abused they are in pretty much perfect condition I use these alongside my Heiko ones and yeah I usually keep two pairs because I use one of them gently and I abuse the other one so yeah this has been the pair that I abused well my Heiko one is now bad and well I would have normally bought a name brand one again but knowing how well this lasted and how well it cut stuff I bought another pair and um, yeah let's just take it out of its box uh, the other than the chinglish the, which is not really important the actual quality is really good so yeah again i don't i don't know if the uh, their quality assurance is good but yeah i assume it is because they feel sharp so yeah i expect these to be the same quality as these and i expect these to last me at least a few years as the pair that I don't abuse and I expect at least another year maybe more from this as the pair that gets abused so yeah I really like these side cutters as I said I'm not going to ramble on longer so yeah if you're interested in them I'll link the these in the description I also want to show you some of the changes I made in the workshop and I'll actually begin with this site that I made the biggest change as you might remember from my workshop tour video I had some cabinets in here that I got rid of so I now have some decent amount of desk space and the uh, the tools that I kept on top of the cabinets I moved them to this shelf it also makes this area a little more accessible for stuff as well and another big change I made here is well as you can see now I have my assortment boxes here and I mounted them on full opening drawer rails. So yeah, as you can see, this thing is really handy because uh, you know, we have a ton of different sizes of screws and crimping terminals and housings and you know, stuff like that. And yeah, this is just a really useful way of sorting them. I also reorganized these drawers, so this is the Voron drawer for example and this has uh, some ferrules in it and here I have the wire organizing and sleeving stuff so yeah it used to be this drawer was fans and the other two were just random miscellaneous junk so I think the, this setup is much better as for uh, where I relocated the fans to, it's in this box. As you can see, uh, I should try to say that less. Uh, I have a ton of fans, so yeah, I'm now keeping them here. And I also added one more shelf here for these smaller boxes. And, well, in case you were wondering where the cabinet that used to sit here went, well, it's here, because I still needed to store other stuff, so now this is my cabinet for uh, chemicals, any other liquids, glues, uh, sorry, stuff like that, and batteries. I had to film at a weird angle by the way, that's why that was kinda hard. And some random stuff here as well, so 
And lastly, I did some reorganizing in here as well. You probably won't be able to tell what changed, but trust me, some stuff changed in here, but yeah, it still looks a lot messy. At least my Noctua fans are somewhere I can reach easier, plus these power supplies are also, again, somewhere easier to reach than where they were before. And yeah, other than that, again, it looks pretty messy. And both those power supplies and those Noctua fans used to sit in this cabinet here. So yeah, I think that place is much better for them. And well, here I, I'm now using to store some monitor stands and some other miscellaneous metal brackets and stuff like that. And here is just some random toolboxes that I have and some belt window, some car stuff in those bags for my car. So yeah, I think that's all I changed in here. Another thing I've been working on is a shelf for these screws. As you can see I have a ton and for that I designed this holder for them. So it's divided into flat heads, Phillips heads, and then uh, to sorry not torx posi drives. And on here smaller flat heads, Phillips heads and hexes. And this is also for hex wrenches. I have this. And lastly, this is for holding nozzles for the Voron. So I started designing this way back in early March. Basically when I just got the printer working or I was about to, I don't exactly remember that, but yeah, something like that. And this went through many revisions. This is V7, but yeah, I only saved on major changes. So yeah, that's why that's only V7. Also has a little gap here just to save on some filament. And I can also add some weight in here if this thing isn't balanced well enough and if it tips forward. So yeah, this is something that will eventually come to the channel sometime. I'm not going to promise anything about when, but it will happen someday. And lastly, I forgot to mention when talking about Voron, I actually went, ordered some uh, custom designed PCBs so actually four of them the idea with these is having these PCBs with uh, in this case DB9 connectors or uh, in this case uh, 17W2 connectors in case you don't know what those are this is DB9 if you're into computers especially old computers this should be familiar for you and this is the 17W2 the idea is the thicker ones can handle the currents of the uh, the hot end heater at least that's the idea I mean it definitely should handle it but yeah maybe the pins would have been enough as well but yeah anyway I went with 17W2s and here it also has a mount for the Adafruit NeoPixel stick so yeah that's the idea this will go on the gantry this will go near the A and B motors between them and this will go right where the uh, limit switches are and uh, yeah as I said these two uses DB9s this uses 17W2 and they all run to this board which is the main board that I hook up everything to so everything from here will run to the SKRs or Raspberry Pi or whatever else is relevant so yeah that this is the idea I'm not promising this will actually happen this is just something that I wanted to try, but yeah, I will only include it in a Voron video if I end up if the result is, is good enough, if I'm successful with it. But yeah, this is the at least one of the plans for the Voron as well. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it for this video. 
I showed a bunch of random crap as I said in the beginning of the video so yeah I don't know how enjoyable this, this was but yeah I hope you still enjoyed it and at least I hope you enjoyed the cat videos in the beginning of the video <laughs> anyway uh, yeah by the way I didn't sleep last night so yeah that's why I'm like this right now so yeah I'll stop rambling, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please leave me a like down below and thanks for watching.